Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Rebecca. This is my channel, Rebecca Reacts. I make reaction videos and today's video has been highly requested by a few of my lovely viewers. And of course, if you have any other videos that you want me to react to, please put the links to them in the comments below as it just makes it easy for me to add to my watch later list. This video is called What's Bangalore Really Like? Netherlands Foreigner in India Vlog. Um, and it's from the YouTube channel Travel Vlog IV, which I assume is four because I, the other Roman, numer Roman numerals even, for four. Um, so I'm assuming her channel is called Travel Vlog Four. Um, yeah, I'm really interested to watch this. It's a 16 minute video, so it's quite long. So grab yourself a snack, settle down. Let's watch it together. And if you like my reactions, please do give this video a thumbs up and please do hit that subscribe button. We are aiming for 55,000 subscribers and I know with your support we can do it. And also I have a second channel where I make vlogs myself. So if you enjoy her vlog, definitely go check out my other channel, which is called Becca W. The link is in the description and it pops up on screen at the end. And yeah, I'm nearly at 3000 subscribers on that channel. And hopefully I've got a vlog coming out soon. So stay tuned. Subscribe to that channel if you want to see me out and about again because London is reopening which is so exciting um but yeah <laughs> also follow me on social media because I post a lot on Instagram and I'm always Instagramming what I'm getting up to during the day so my Instagram handle is in the description and also you can see it here next to me as well <laughs> but let's get on with this video what's it really like to live in Bangalore India well in this video I'm going to take you on a journey through the city that I'm so privileged to call home hi my name is Ivana and I've been living in Bangalore now for three years when I first came to India I never would have thought that Bangalore would end up being my home but it is and I absolutely love it. Our journey today starts at the airport here in Bangalore because that is something that really really makes Bangalore very special for me. It's location. Bangalore is almost in the center of India which makes it so incredibly well connected. It is very easy to travel to the north of India but also to the south of India not just by flight but also by trains and by buses and actually Bangalore is also very well internationally connected. Just a couple of years ago we got a direct connection with Thailand for the perfect holiday but actually also with Amsterdam <gasps> which is my hometown. <laughs> you know I love Amsterdam I so, so much. I was so happy with that so when you live in Bangalore it is super super easy not just to travel all over India but actually also internationally. This is only the beginning of our journey and obviously I'm also going to be discussing the challenges that I face living here in Bangalore so make sure that you stay tuned until the end of this video. Time to hit the road for our our life in Bangalore tour. Driving towards the city from the airport, you'll slowly see the landscape change from a lot of greenery to bigger and bigger buildings. The biggest mm -hmm. misconception that people have about Bangalore, however, is that it's a super industrial city with no character or culture. Throughout the video, I'm going to show you the many layers of Bangalore, so we definitely clear that wrong perception anybody might have. The first place where I always take anybody who's new to the city is the neighborhood Indranagar. Get ready for our first night out in Bangalore. Welcome mm. to Indranagar, one of the most famous neighborhoods here in Bangalore and also one of my personal favorites. When I came to Bangalore, I really didn't know that it was the hipster capital of India. Yes, I dare I say didn't know that, that because here in Bangalore, there is this whole health scene, first of all. If you want to order anything keto, it will always be there, available on Swiggy in multiple <laughs> options. Eat Fit actually also started in this city. The chai shops, they're super hipster. <laughs> and then we also have amazing restaurants with a lot of fusion cuisines. For today's little tour of Bangalore, I wanted to take you to one of my favorite hipster restaurants, the Fatty Bao. The Fatty The restaurant looks super super hipster. They have different kind of Asian mm -hmm. cuisines. They have Malaysian, they have Japanese, they have a little bit Korean. The food is wow. absolutely mind blowing. So if you want to go for a hipster experience in Bangalore, I would definitely 10 10 recommend the Fatty Bao and hanging out here in the Indranagar. Or if you want a hipster experience in India, then Bangalore is your city. It's the hipster <laughs> capital of India. <laughs> also what I really really like about Bangalore, it is now a Monday evening about 10 p.m. and Still, there are plenty of people in the street. However, if you want to go out, please do keep in mind that usually any parties, clubs, bars, restaurants will be closing around 
maybe 1 or 2 a.m. That's quite early, especially for Amsterdam standards. <laughs> I was always used to partying until like 5, 6 a.m. in the morning, but that doesn't necessarily happen in Bangalore. Also, another hipster thing, if you love beer, Bangalore is the city in India that has the most microbreweries. So, yeah. This, hmm. this city has a lot more. Very interesting and very surprising. The hipster culture is linked with the innovative spirit and startup culture that Bangalore has. To tell you more about that, let's first go to the most beautiful building in Bangalore, Vedana Suda. And what an innovative spirit we have here in Bangalore. Every single one of my foreigner friends who has visited Bangalore and even my brother immediately noticed the vibrant startup culture. So many famous billion dollar companies have started here in Bangalore mm. and even though people keep calling Bangalore the Silicon Valley of India I think by now Bangalore has actually surpassed that term and proven itself as not the Silicon Valley of India but the innovative capital of India for me as an entrepreneur and somebody who has had her own company for the past five years it was nothing less than thrilling to come to Bangalore and see what all the startups are doing here one such startup that recently launched is Senecpod sit and go. Senecpod is a company which is completely run and managed by Senex, the Indian word for ex-servicemen or veterans. And I honestly couldn't be more proud to be a part of this organization. During COVID times, doctors had a really hard time going back and forth between their homes and the hospitals. And Senex, so Indian veterans, actually managed that they were stress-free and safe during these challenging times. Now Senecpod has also launched Senecpod sit and go, which has a three-step safety protocol. Every single driver of the new initiative, Senecpod sit and go, is trained by Indian ex-servicemen. The cars are all tracked and monitored in the Senec control room, and the drivers actually also wear gloves next to a face mask, but they also have these beautiful formal uniforms. And of course, there is a shield in the car to make sure everything is according to the highest hygiene standards but this is That's only so the good. first step of the three-step safety protocol because for the first time in india there is a completely electric fleet launching oh, which is amazing. available for consumers every single car in the senecpod sit and go fleet is fully electric which that's means so that while transferring here in Bangalore it is also safe for the environment and then the third step of the three-step safety protocol is that you don't need an app to use this service oh. there's a huge part of the Indian population which still doesn't have access to a smartphone or even the internet so Senex actually wanted to make sure that even these people have safe transfers. Now you might be wondering, how does this work and how yeah. can I spot them? <laughs> well, these cute little bonbons, as I like to call them, are available all over Bangalore. And when you see the pot light on top of the car, green, it is available for you to just step wow. into the car. Upon the so it's parking, like our black taxis over in London. From green to blue, which means that it's occupied. So mm -hmm. even if you see this little bomb bomb passing by and the pod light is blue, then it is not available. But if it is green, you can always just walk in. There is a smart meter which will be tracking your ride and mm -hmm. your expenses. Senex obviously wants you to pay a fair rate. So it is all according to market standard. And then you will be delivered to your destination in a completely electric car without an app. Honestly, I am so honored and beyond excited to be part of such an amazing initiative which today starts in Bangalore but hopefully will soon be expanding to other Indian cities mm, and that would be knows, amazing. maybe even international. But don't get confused. Below the surface of all this hipster startup culture, Bengaluru has an incredibly rich history and culture in which the native Bangaloreans take great pride. It's easy to miss this being blinded by all the modern comforts and entertainment that Bengaluru has to offer. However, beyond the modern malls, hipster restaurants and tech parks, it's the cute local markets and of course the local eat where you can find the true riches of Bengaluru. Therefore, I asked my friend Shruti, who is a true Kanadiga, to help us get a better understanding of this side of Bengaluru. First of all, Namaskara to everybody watching this video. I am Shruti, I'm based out of Bangalore. I'm from Bangalore, Kanadiga. And I have been here for almost three years. 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 I
Gandhi Bazaar and when you hear this, I'm sure what's running in your mind, yes, of course, we are here for breakfast at the very, very popular Vidyarthi Bhavan. It is almost a heritage site, I can say. It's almost 80 years old and it's started in 1943. So I'll tell you a lot more about this place once we get inside. So I hope you're excited to see the food <laughs> as excited as we are to eat. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Vidyarthi Bhavan is very loved and frequented by locals. Some Bangalore families have been coming here for decades for their delicious weekend breakfast. The waiters also have next level skills and carry more plates than I've ever seen anybody carry. That is a lot. <laughs> yes, yes, extremely love it. So what is this? Oh, uh, this is the Sambar 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 The vada and the idli are amazing, but the true gem, according to me, is the dosa. It's a crispy on the outside and soft on the inside, savory crab, which is served with a potato masala. Shruti told me that some people believe the recipe for this has never changed in all this time. One of the reasons why this place is so popular is because people believe that the taste has changed since 1940. The local language Kannada is something that's very dear to native Bangaloreans. I asked Shruti why this is. I think the emotional attachment that people have towards Kannada here is uh, people are very proud of their language. People are very proud of you know, all the traditions and cultures that we have. And one of the reasons why you know, we are uh, kind of stressed on our language and the importance of our language is only because we want to preserve it. This is pretty much the same with every state of India and that's a very beautiful thing. Like we all respect our boundaries but at the same time if you belong to a one particular state, we are very proud of their language and they want it to be preserved as long as they can. So one of the reasons why they teach their kids and their grandkids about the language and tradition is only because they want it to be alive as long as it can. That's what we understand. Yeah, like we are very diverse, we are very welcoming, but at the same time we make sure that our traditions and culture is not compromised and uh, we do share it with people who come in and uh, very proudly we uh, you know, talk about our language and our traditions. Shruti, thank you so, so much for showing us a little bit of Bangalore heritage today. My pleasure. Um, I hope you liked it. I loved it. Thank you so much. And this is actually how I also feel people kind of underestimate Bangalore because they see it as this big industrial city. But at the same time, there are so many layers of cultural heritage if you are willing to look for them. I think that's a lot. That's true for a lot of places in India. are very welcoming to outsiders. People very often ask me why I specifically chose Bangalore to settle first in India and for that explanation I'm taking you to another lovely spot called Church Street. This is the first place I visited when I came to Bangalore for the first time so it's only fitting that I let you in on the secret what makes Bangalore mm -hmm. really special in this place. What actually really captured my heart about Bangalore is the eclectic mix of people. Obviously we have the original people who are born and right in Bangalore, the true Karnatikas, who are so welcoming from people not just all over India, but actually also internationally. In contrast to other large cities, a lot of people come to Bangalore by themselves for work, which makes the city a lot more accessible. It was so much easier for me to make friends here. There are all kinds of events organized, focused on people meeting new people, and wow. still every day I am meeting new friends in Bangalore. Does all That's this phrase so nice. mean that Bangalore is without flaws? Of course not. Let me explain to you some of the challenges of living here while we're off to one of my favorite spots in the city. The biggest challenge I have faced here in Bangalore is the traffic. The traffic in Bangalore is actually so bad that it is officially the worst in the world. So I'm not just Ooh. randomly saying anything. The ways that I have discovered to deal with this is obviously not to go out during peak hours, <laughs> which are somewhere around like 8 
a.m. in the morning until 11 a.m. And in the evening, it usually starts from 6 p.m. up to, I would say, 8 p.m. So if you're traveling outside of those hours, I think you should be okay. Also, there are certain areas in Bangalore which are more prone to traffic. The Domnur flyover from Koramangala to Indranagar around 6 p.m. That, that's going to take you a lot of time. <laughs> if you get all good that, information you for me. have experienced the worst traffic in the world. But like I mentioned, if you just travel outside of those hours, you should be perfectly fine. Then the final thing, um, which I didn't necessarily find challenging, but which I adjusted to, is that certain parts of Bangalore can be super modern. So you will definitely see girls wearing cleavage, wearing short dresses, wearing skirts and everything. Usually this is in the modern malls, but then there are also very traditional conservative areas and over there you really have to dress for the occasion. So I personally would always err on the more conservative side. So even today, for instance, I am just wearing pants and a t-shirt because if I end up being in a conservative place, um, yeah, I don't feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You can wear it, you can wear Good to know. shirts, and skirts and dresses. But a lot of people will stare and I just feel it's not really appropriate. So mm -hmm. that is definitely something to think about, especially if you're a girl. I would tend to recommend to just adjust and dress for the occasion. Thank you so much for sticking around this far into our tour because now it's time to reveal the absolute best part about living in Bangalore. Welcome to Kaba Park. And then one of the best parts of Bangalore, which is the weather. Before I came to Bangalore, I think 99% of the people who had lived in Bangalore or were born and raised here told me the weather is one of the best in the world. Having lived here for three years, I can fully, fully support that because due to its location, Bangalore has a very, very stable climate meaning that the weather rarely goes below 24 degrees and oh. rarely goes up more than 35 degrees which makes living that sounds here amazing to me so incredibly pleasant my quality of life has improved so much by being able to spend so much time outdoors only during the monsoon season will it rain quite a lot of days one after the other but that only lasts let's say two or three months so it's not that big of an issue and actually when it becomes a little bit hotter in may june the monsoon season is actually very cozy after that really the weather in bangalore is something else and it makes life such a huge pleasure here <laughs> if you have been to bangalore or maybe if you have lived in bangalore yourself let me know down in the comments below what I you really love like most her. about the city She's and lovely. why you would recommend other people to visit this beautiful city if you enjoyed the video make sure I to did. put a thumbs up also make sure to subscribe to my channel i will if you would like to see more videos in the future thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time Bye. I am going to subscribe to her channel because I really liked the way she kind of spoke and the way she kind of guided us around. I will obviously leave the link to this original video in the description if you want to go check out her and her channel. Uh, but yeah, I've just subscribed. And I'm actually going to follow her on Instagram as well because um, she just seems really cool. And I'm going to follow her on Instagram now. Travel vlog for there she is ivana that's her name ivana look i'm gonna follow yay <laughs> i'm excited to oh, her instagram just looks incredible oh it's a bit dark on the camera can you see that but yeah i've just followed her on instagram because she seems really cool and yeah hopefully i can watch more of her videos but this video has like half a million views which is kind of mad and she's got a quarter of a million subscribers so she's doing very well for herself um i feel like i've learned a lot about bangalore and if i were to visit one day which you know it's definitely on my list i just don't have the money <laughs> at the moment um but yeah i've definitely learned a lot some tips and tricks that will help me if i eventually visit one day but yeah thank you so much to the people who suggested i watch this video i really enjoyed it um it's been it's been a while since like I was fully engaged in like a long video like this so that was a really nice refresher um but yeah if you have any other videos that you want me to react to 
please put the links in the comments below so I can add it to my long list of videos to film. If you enjoyed my reactions, please do give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to this channel. I'm trying to reach 55,000 subscribers and with your help, I know we can do it. And yeah, share this video with friends and family and encourage them to subscribe if you want to. You know, you don't have to subscribe, it's fine. Um, thank you to all my supporters who support me on um, Patreon as well. And if you do want to like support me financially, links to my Patreon and PayPal are in the description. But you know, the best way to support me is just by hitting that subscribe button. I also have a second channel called Becca W where I make vlogs. So if you enjoyed her vlog about Bangalore, I'm sure you'll enjoy some of my vlogs about London. And London is finally opening up again. So hopefully there'll be a lot more vlogs on my channel in the future. The link to that is in the description and should pop up on screen as well any minute now. And also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. The link's in the description and yeah, my Instagram's here. I post a lot on Instagram. So if you're missing my videos, definitely follow me on Instagram cause I'm always on Instagram stories. <laughs> Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon for a new video. Bye everyone.